Hey everyone, Ramesh here. Today I am going to start a new video tutorial series on registration and login with Spring Boot Spring Security Timely Hibernate and MySQL database. We are going to develop a Spring MSC web application. It has a registration and login features. Okay, so this is a common requirement. Uh, basically, whenever you create a web application, uh, you might use a registration and login. Uh, you know implementation in your web application so we'll develop this module so that uh, you can reuse this module in your web applications and this video tutorial series is very useful for spring boot beginners who can understand how to develop a real-time spring msc web application it has a registration and login features all right so here is our high level project requirements we need to create a web application for user registration account where users should able to perform these operations so users should be able to register to the application and users should be able to log into the application using a registered credentials all right for example let me show you the real world example so look at here this is uh, the facebook uh, web application whenever uh, first time you use facebook you should have to create an account for facebook all right you have to register or sign up or you need to create an account for the facebook and then you will able to log into the facebook to register or to sign up to the facebook first you need to enter your details like first name last name email address or phone number and uh, password and then you can hit sign up button to register or sign up to the Facebook okay so once you successfully register then you can able to use email address and password to log into the Facebook all right so similar functionality we are going to implement in this video tutorial series all right great so this is our application flow so this is the login page and this is the registration page so whenever you want to log into the application first you need to register to the application so look at here this is the register here button you can click here to register to the application so once you click on register here link then you will navigate to the registration page and here you need to enter your details and you need to hit the register button to register to the application so if you are already registered to the application then you can use this login here link to navigate to the login page okay so this is the typical application flow and let me show you uh, this application this flow uh, in a real time so look at here this is the web application that we are going to implement in this video tutorial so first we'll have a look into the demo and then we'll implement this application step by step in this video tutorial series okay so this is the login page so before you log into the application you should have to register to the application so in order to register to the application click on a register here link so this will navigate to the registration page and here we need to enter our details like first name i am going to enter ramesh last name for the email address ramesh at the gmail.com and password so you can enter any password i am going to enter password one two three okay and i will click on register button here so once user registered successfully you can see here the success message we have successfully registered to our awesome app okay so now the user is successfully registered to the application now we can able to use a registered email and password to log into our application so click on login here link so this will navigate to the login page again and here we are going to enter ramesh at the gmail.com that we have just registered right and password is password123 and hit login all right here we go so this is the home page once you logged in successfully to the application then you will see this page so this is basically a home page and here you can see the uh, the text and this is the logout button you can hit logout button to log out from the application so click on logout so look at here this will navigate to the login page again 
so this is the uh, registration and login module that we are going to implement in this video tutorial series all right great let's take a look at our application flow and how the request uh, will process so first we'll begin with a browser so whenever we hit a link in a browser then the http request will first come to the user registration controller this is basically a spring MSC controller which will handle http request such as get and post and then request will move to the user service and from user service to user repository and then finally hit to the database okay and again user uh, repository will retrieve a data from the mysql database and user service will use a user repository to get a data from the user repository and user registration controller will get a data from the user service and finally user registration controller will return a view that is timely html template to the browser for a rendering okay so user registration controller will return a html page that is the timely template that will be rendered on a browser so this is the typical uh, flow in spring mc web application let's have a look into our application architecture so at a front end we are going to use time leap and we also use bootstrap css framework to make our web application responsive and at the back end we are going to use three layer architecture this is the controller layer service layer and this is the repository or a DAO layer at a controller layer we are going to use spring msu to develop uh, spring msu controllers which will handle http request and at a service layer we keep all our business logic and transaction related stuff and in a repository layer we are going to develop uh, jpa repositories uh, to you know to interact with the database so basically we are going to use spring data jpa to develop a repository layer and spring data jpa basically we use to reduce a boilerplate code that is required for developing uh, you know code operations for database okay so basically repository layer is responsible for establishing a connection with the mysql database and it will expose us database code operations all right and at a database part we are going to use mysql database so this is a pretty much high level architecture of our spring boot application all right great let's have a look into the tools and technologies that we are going to use in our spring mc web application so we are going to use latest release of spring boot that is 2.3 as of now and we are going to use spring mc and spring security modules from the spring framework and spring boot 2.3 internally uses spring framework 2.5.2.6 plus and we are going to use marvin 3.2 and we use Maven basically for dependency management and project build tool and we are going to use java 8 and we use spring data jpa uh, for developing a repository layer or a DAO layer spring data jpa internally uses hibernate as a jpa provider we basically use spring data jpa to reduce a boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer or a repository layer and finally we are going to use time leap to develop our view layer all right so these are the tools and technologies that we are going to use in this tutorial series i again divided this video tutorial series into eight parts in post part we are going to create and set up spring boot project in eclipse sts id and also we are going to set up a database in part two we are going to create user and role jp entities we are going to maintain a many to many mapping between them and in part three we are going to implement a backend for a registration feature so basically we are going to develop a repository service and controller layer for a registration feature in part four we are going to develop front end for a registration feature that is we are going to develop a time lip template and, and then we'll have a demo for this registration feature and in fifth part we are going to implement spring security configuration so we will have a look on spring security auto configuration and then we'll also have a look into 
how to configure spring security in our spring MVC application in part 6 we will implement backend for login feature and in part 7 again we implement a frontend for login feature and finally in part 8 we will implement logout and home page implementation and then we will have a demo of the entire web application alright so we are going to develop this web application step by step alright this is the part 1 and in this part we are going to create and set up spring boot project in eclipse sts id and we will also set up and configure mysql database alright let us switch to the eclipse sts id and let's quickly create our spring boot project i am in eclipse sts id in order to create a spring boot project go to the file new and then choose spring starter project so look at here the service url so this is a spring initializer uh, you know url so basically we use spring initializer to quickly create and bootstrap our spring boot project and spring initializer is integrated in spring toolsuit id and we are going to use spring initializer to quickly create and bootstrap our spring boot project you can use spring initializer from the web browser you can access this link and you can create a spring boot project from there as well so in a browser you can just type start dot spring dot io and then this is the spring initializer user interface through which you can create a spring boot project okay great so we are going to use spring initializer which is integrated in spring toolsuit id to create our spring boot project okay so let's give a name to our project so let me give a name as a registration login spring boot security time leap so we are going to use spring boot spring security time leap hibernate and mysql database right uh, hence uh, this makes sense this name makes sense for the project so i have given a name to the project like this and choose a project type here either maven or gradle so if you are interested in gradle you can choose gradle and we are going to use maven in this video tutorial series so i am going to choose maven here and packaging as a jar and java version 8 you can use l11 14 if you have installed java l11 or 14 you can use java l11 or 14 i am going to use java 8 language java kotlin groovy so we are going to use La, uh, java so let's choose java and group id net.java guides so you can give any group id that you want and artifact id is going to be our application name so let's keep artifact id as it is and version default keep as it is description demo project for spring boot and spring boot time leap all right and hibernate and package as net.javagates.spring boot you can give any package name that you want once you are happy with the details click next and look at your spring boot version this is the latest release of spring boot as of now and we need to choose the appropriate spring boot starter dependency from here so we are going to develop spring mvc web application so we are going to choose spring web starter dependency all right and we are going to uh, develop uh, a repository or a DAO layer for that we are going to use you know spring data jp so, so we use spring data jp to develop our repository layer and spring data jp internally uses hibernate as a jp provider and we use spring data jp basically to reduce a boilerplate code that is required for develop you know implementing a DAO layer or a repository layer okay great now uh, we are also going to use a time leap so let's go ahead and let's choose a time leap dependency and we are going to also use mysql database right so let's go ahead and let's pick up mysql gdbg driver and we are going to also use spring security okay let's choose spring security and what else remaining uh, we are going to also use spring dev tools okay 
spring dev tools right spring boot okay great so this is the tool it is very useful whenever you make some changes in application you no need to restart spring boot application again and again so spring boot dev tools dependency will take care of that so once you select all the required dependencies then hit finish so this will create a new spring boot project in eclipse sts id so look at here okay let's wait for a moment marvin will download all the spring boot dependencies and it will set up a you know environment for us so this is the default structure of our spring boot project so whenever you create a new project using spring initializer then this is the default structure of our spring boot project and this is our spring boot entry point class okay so basically it has a main method where we can run our spring boot project as a standalone using this class okay so basically this is a entry point of our spring boot project and this is the application dot properties file where we configure all the application level properties and this is the format xml uh, here we keep all the dependencies so now first we we are going to complete a registration feature and then we will move to the security part right so for timing we are going to comment out this spring boot starter security dependency so we'll see how to implement spring security and login feature in further videos of this tutorial series okay now we have created and set up spring boot project in eclipse sts id now let's go ahead and let's configure mysql database okay great open the application dot properties file and here i have just entered jdbc url username and password here so look at here this is the jdbc url to connect to the mysql database and this is the username and password and this is the hibernate dialect to connect and to generate a queries for mysql database and this is the ddl auto property so hibernate will automatically create and update database tables using this property okay great so this is a pretty much database configuration we required in our spring boot application you can also provide a log levels uh, for hibernate let me also configure log levels for hibernate so that we can monitor hibernate generated sqls on a console okay so this is the debug log for hibernate okay so we have just configured debug and trace log for hibernate all right let's go ahead and let's create a database in mysql uh, server so open mysql workbench so mysql workbench is popular client to interact with the mysql server so inside mysql database server we are going to create a database let's write the statement create database let's give a database name as demo and execute this statement and refresh here so look at here de demo database is created and this demo database we have configured in our spring boot project right let me show you that so look at here this is the demo all right so make sure that you have you have entered uh, you know correct database name and username and password as per your mysql database installation on your machine okay great so in this part uh, we have created and set up spring boot project and we have also configured mysql database in next part we will see uh, how to create uh, you know jpa entities I will see you in the next part. Thank you.